Well, hello everybody. It's Ronnie with Whip and Chain. I work with Maggie and Lauren to bring you beautiful crochet tutorials. This is another one in our series of 12 Days of Christmas. This is a pocket scarf. It's beautiful. It's easy. It's the Suzette stitch. And it's an easy slip stitch to make the pockets. You can make the pockets shorter, longer. There's a lot of versatility to to this scarf, and um, we're going to dive into it, but look at how beautiful this is. It's This actually scarf is a request from a very, very patient follower, Loretta. She's been asking for this for probably over a year, so I wanted to finally get this to her because she's just been one of the most amazing people in this crochet world besides Maggie and my mother that I have ever met. So anyway, so we're going to dive right into this pattern and trust me, it's easy, it's fun, and it goes super quick. And I bet you Loretta, you're going to bang out as many of these as you want. And you can do color changing yarn, you can do regular yarn, you can use whatever your heart desires. I enjoyed this because of the two, I am all about different colors so that's why I did it this way but you do it any way you want so let's dive into the video okay to dive into this beautiful pocket scarf a couple things you're gonna need I would recommend a stitch marker just until you get started big help you're gonna need some darning needles six millimeter J hook my clover hooks and your yarn of choice. Um, you can use any acrylic yarn that you want. I did not go with Hobby Lobby yarn this time. Um, to be honest with you, I did not have time to run there. It made me so sad. So I stopped at Joanne's. And I saw this. And I thought, you know what, let me give it a try. Because a lot of, I call it like, the, the the finger yarn it has those little fingers there's yarn there's the fuzzy yarn thought I'd give it a try now I bought two of these but you technically only need one for this scarf but I am going to use a little bit of the center dark blue for the one pocket but if you want to know what this color that I used is is called let's see if I can find it skylight frost and let me tell you, the way it changes, I like it. But I would have loved the Hobby Lobby version better. I'm just a Hobby Lobby girl, heart and soul. But this worked out beautiful, and you'll see as we move on. But I want to get you started on how to start this pattern so you know. So, first thing we need to do... And this is another thing that I love about the Hobby Lobby yarn. I never have to fight to find the center. Now, this ball was pretty easy. The other ball that I used, I ended up getting a big ball of, I call it yarn throw up, that I had to unweave and unknot, and it was a hot mess. But once I got through that, the yarn actually, it, it pulled pretty good. So, anyway, now my scarf... If you want to copy off of my width of my scarf, I chained 27. You can chain any width that you want. But remember, since this scarf has pockets, when you fold up to make your pocket, the width is going to determine the size of your pocket. So if you make it real thin, it's going to be hard to get your hand. I got the hiccups again. It's going to be hard to get your hands in there. So I would recommend a little wider, but you do your pattern the way it works for you. And again, all you need to do to start this is a chain of an odd number. Okay, that's it. That's all you need. I am going to do a small sample so you understand how to do this because it's a one row repeat you just need me to help you get started and that is exactly what I'm here for so let's get started everybody one two three four five six 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and I'll do fifteen. All right. So I use stitch markers in the beginning just to identify my beginning and end until I got a few rows in that I didn't feel I needed them anymore. But you can use them through the whole pattern if you want. Don't feel that you you can't. You can do. This is your craft, your hobby, your project. You do what works right for you. Because if you listen to other people and you don't need it, you don't need it. And then it comes out wonky, then you're like, oh, I should have listened to myself. If your gut is telling you to do something, by all means, listen listen to your body. Your body knows. Now, what I do is I use the back lumps. I'm going to zoom you in. I use the back lumps for the first row because by doing that, I'm going to cheat and show you. When you do that, can you see it? You get a beautiful finished row. Look at that. And it works better with the pattern than not doing that. So that's your choice. Either way, it will work, just so you know. So second chain from the hook. And turn it over. In that first horizontal bar, I want you to put a single crochet. And then I want you to put a double crochet in that same bar. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my stitch marker and mark that single crochet because it's my first stitch of the next row. That way you're not second guessing where your stitches are. Okay. Then you skip a bar and the next bar, again, you do a single crochet and then you do a double crochet. And this stitch is called the Suzette stitch. Skip one, go to the next one. Single crochet and a double. And they are in the exact same stitch that you do. Not separate stitches. Skip a bar, go to the next. Single crochet, double crochet. Skip, go to the next, single crochet, double crochet. Skip, go to the next, single crochet, double crochet. Skip. Go to the next single crochet, double crochet, and then in your very last stitch, you only put in a single crochet. If I can get it. It's hard. Doing this is not the easiest. And it don't want to cooperate with me. Nope, didn't get it all. You want to get the full stitch. You don't, you don't need to rush.
There we go. See? Single crochet. All right. Now, let me turn. You chain one. In that very first stitch, put a single crochet and you put a double. This is the repeating row. And then what I do, after I do that single and double, I put my stitch marker right in that single crochet. Then you skip a stitch. Then you do a single and a double. Skip a stitch. Single and a double. Skip a stitch, a single, and a double. Skip a stitch, a single, and then a double. Skip a stitch, a single, and a double. Skip a stitch, a single, and a double. And then when you skip a stitch, your last one is your last stitch. And in that last stitch, you always put in a single crochet. And then you can take your stitch marker out. You turn. You chain one in that very first stitch. A single crochet. And then a double. And then if you want, you can put your stitch marker back, right back in. And then you skip a stitch, put a single, and then a double. And you just proceed this way, row after row after row. Now, if you're using different yarn, I would recommend your scarf to at least be 85. If you're doing the pockets, and I'm going to wrap it around my neck once, at least 85 to 90 inches long but you if you don't want to do wrapped around your neck once before it hangs do the length that works for you okay there's no rule saying you have to wear this scarf a particular way because you don't have to all right so again this is just following down you skip a stitch you do a single and then you do a double. Skip a stitch, a single, and a double. And then when you skip skip a stitch, it's your last stitch. And do you see why I'm putting stitch markers in? Because this yarn it is hard to see in the beginning. Just one single crochet, not a single and a double. Get in there, take it out. You turn and you chain one. And then that first stitch, you put a single crochet and a double. And that's all you do for this. It's repeat this row time and time again until you get the most that you want. Now I want to show you this beautiful color changing. Ignore my little cute little bearer panda jammies. So, so this scarf started with this beautiful, let me raise you up a little bit, with this beautiful, I guess, I don't think the camera's gonna do it justice, with this beautiful dark blue. And then, as it transitions lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and look at this white beautiful 
So think about it. It started in this blue. Then it trans different shades of blue. Like it's crazy cool. The way it trans transition from this dark blue to this ice white. I love personally. I love the color. So now I'm going to show you how to do the pockets. Now make sure you pick what side the right side is going to be for you because for the Suzette stitch both sides are right. All right, so you need to make your pocket now. I am personally recommending Ten inches but you don't have to do 10 inches you can do whatever you want you can do you want to do it a little smaller you can you can do eight inches you can do five inches shoot you can do three inches if you want you can do whatever you want I'm going to repeat myself. That is the beauty of crocheting. You get to make the decisions. And I don't think people are understanding that too well. Like when you when you watch other free tutorials, people are saying you got to do this and you got to do that. Maybe with some stuff you have to. But let me explain to you. There's a lot of wiggle room of what you can do and change things around in these projects. And here's here's food for thought. If you change something around and it ends up not looking right, you can take it out and you can do it again. So what I do is once I get the measurement that I want, you can see your row quite clearly. I do strongly recommend that you take a stitch marker and mark to make sure your pocket is not going to be crooked. Because after all this work, you don't want this pocket to be crooked. So now, after you got the pocket to what you need, now I'm going to rip out my sample because this is the color of this. And I left at the bottom of it, I left enough white so I can also do that. Right. So for this, you make a slip knot. Take your hook, see where it folds? You want to put your hook as close to that fold through both sides as you can. And put on your end. We will weave, or you, you can weave in your ends at the end, so don't worry about it. Pull it through and chain one. That gets you started, okay? Now I want you to go back in and pull through yarn in that same hole and then you just slip stitch. Then you go to your next, you got, make sure you're not going in the same one on either side. That was the hole I went through, there's my next one. Then you pull through and you slip stitch, okay? And then you find your next. See, that would have been the same hole. Go into the next gap. So 
So you really need to take your time. Pull it a little tight, not real tight, so it don't you don't want it to buckle. Okay. So now you go into your next one. You make sure. There you go. Pull through and slip stitch. And this is it for the pockets. You need to do this. On this side, you cut your yarn when you're at the end, and then you do the other side. Don't try to be funny and slip stitch down. It will be noticeable, and it'll take it away, take away the beauty of this scarf. And always make sure you're going into the next stitch. The next gap. Just like that. And if you look, it's a beautiful edging. And that is all you have to do. To make your pockets. All right. So you go all the way up here, you tie off, you do the other side and you tie off. And then your pocket shell is done. That's it. Very easy pattern. Very fun pattern. And here's here's the most important part. It's absolutely beautiful. Very, very beautiful. So I can't wait to see yours for this. So can you please do us a favor? Come find us on Facebook. We're under Whip and Chain for Work in Progress. And Jane, and can you help us also up by hitting that like and subscribe button at the bottom? We need it. We need your love. We need more people. It helps us to be able to bring you more tutorials. And again, my name is Ronnie. I work with Maggie and Lauren to bring you these tutorials. So I hope you enjoy it. If there's something else you want us to do, need help with something, please send us a message on Facebook. Or you can comment below here. Until our next project, happy crocheting, everybody.